Okay, so today we're going to look at finding lengths of sides and angles in triangles that are not necessarily right angled. In other words, these rules will actually work for all triangles. And the first thing to note is the common convention in labelling the angles is to label these with capital letters A, B and C and then the lengths of the sides opposite these angles are given the corresponding lowercase letters A, B and C. And the first rule that's very helpful quite often is what is called the sine rule. And this basically says that the sine of angle A divided by the length A of the side opposite that angle, that is equal to sine of angle B divided by B which is equal to sine of angle C divided by the length C. And that's particularly helpful if for instance you're given a length of two sides and one angle opposite one of those sides and you want to find the angle opposite the other side. Or it can also be used to find an unknown side given the two angles and one of the sides involved. The other rule that's quite helpful is the cosine rule. And the cosine rule is especially helpful if you know the length of two sides of the triangle and if you know the angle between those two sides and you want to find the length of the other side. And the cosine rule says that the length c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times the cosine of the angle c. And so let's have a look at a couple of examples to see how to apply these rules in practice. And just also a note that these diagrams are not drawn exactly to scale in terms of sides and angles. They're mainly just to give you that idea of how to do these computations. So consider this triangle. And let's say that side has length 75, this side length 44, and that that angle here is 100 degrees. And let's suppose we wanted to find the angle alpha over here. And what you might notice is that the angle alpha is opposite the side of length 44 and the angle 100 degrees is opposite the side of length 75, indicating we can actually use the sine rule here. And so using the sine rule, in fact, is actually going to give us the following. It is going to give us that the sine of, in this case, 100 degrees divided by 75 is equal to sine alpha divided by 44. And we could rearrange this by swapping the sides of the equation over and then multiplying both sides by 44 to find that sine alpha is actually equal to 44 times sine of 100 degrees divided by 75. And make sure that you know whether you're in degrees or radians. I'm going to do this example in degree mode, working out alpha will become inverse sine of the expression above. That is inverse sine of 44 sine 100 over 75, so inverse sine of that whole expression, which correct to two decimal places gives alpha equal to 35.29 degrees. So that's an example of using the sine rule. Now let's consider a second example to see what would be most appropriate to use. Suppose in particular that this side has length 60, this side here has length 25 and that this angle is 45 degrees. And suppose we want to find x, the length of the other side. So this is an example where we know the length of these two sides plus the angle between them and want the length of the other side. This would be a good use for the cosine rule. So that's going to give us that the length x squared equals 25 squared plus 60 squared minus 2 times 25 times 60 times cosine of 45 degrees. Just excuse me going on the next line there. And when we work this out, it in fact gives us x squared equals 2103.6797 to four decimal places. Although if you can store the answer in memory or recall the answer, it's good to get as accurate a value as possible there. And that then shows that the length of that side x is in fact equal to 45.87. So these are examples of using the sine rule and the cosine rule. Thank you.